in evangelism began at age six. Missionary training began at age nine, but it was not until I took a Christian service assignment in Hollywood in Los Angeles at age 20, required by my Christian university, that I began to learn about the hidden world within sophisticated America. I began preaching on the street with a group called Open Air Campaigners. After getting married at age 21, I spent a lot of nights on Skid Row in Los Angeles to all hours of the night, preaching to the drunks, the pimps, the prostitutes, to gangs of all types, to the drugged out, the homeless, and the other such types as hung out there. I kept it up even until I was nine months pregnant with my first child. I worked in nearby, a nearby rescue mission, a soup kitchen, where I preached to the street community who had come for a free meal if they endured the preaching. Later, I preached in Long Beach on the street with a full choir and other evangelists to gangs and prostitutes in Africa over seven years. I preached many meetings in open air fields and in churches, many evangelistic. The greatest miracle of all is seeing someone born again, coming out of darkness into his marvelous light, 1 Peter 2, verse 9. This is the greatest joy life can hold for us, to see the miraculous working of the Spirit during 40 Things instantly to transform a truly repentant person, taking them from the clutches of Satan and put them into the kingdom of light. There is no greater joy, none. If you are not involved with spreading the salvation of Messiah Yahushua to the world, you are living way below what you are called to do, robbing yourself. There is no eternal life outside of the precious blood of the Lamb and His resurrection. To love others as He loved us is to share our testimony with them of the great salvation of our soon coming King. I went on to work in jails, youth detention facilities, prisons, and halfway houses. I learned the tricks of demonized demonized people, many who use the rhetoric of Christianity to get what they wanted. For in a drugged state and altered consciousness, by shooting up, snorting, chewing, or smoking, or drinking cheap whiskey, all they care about is getting what they want. I learned the mentality of these outcasts of society. Later, I learned why so many very educated and professional people ended up homeless, eating out of garbage cans. I later entered a similar world of darkness, but did not take drugs, trying to escape the horrors of my own reality. So, I understand what goes wrong with a person that ends them up there. It is a fact that it is usually the very intelligent and highly talented who end up in such dire conditions because they can't shut out reality that has overwhelmed their minds. So they leave family and friends and end up eating out of garbage cans, college grads, doctors, hospital personnel, teachers, counselors, businessmen of all types, etc. My education has been broad and varied. I've ministered in religious circles and seen the incredible deception, hypocrisy, pride in masking. I've ministered in hospital, nursing homes and facilities for special children of all types. 
My education has taught me humility, not criticism or judgment. He took all religion and pride out of me. He humbled me, and I praise him for it. In relating to you, some of what I learned about the mind of a person on drugs, I will transfer that knowledge over to the average American or citizen of the UK, wherever Greco Roman culture has invaded with its Lucifer based mind programming. The cultures of ancient Assyria, Egypt, Babylon, Mede, Persia, Greece, and Rome are all Lucifer. Satan base were open portals for the coming and going of the fallen ones into the earth. These seven empires formed the head of the beast with his seven heads, minus to date the re rising and joining of a composite beast of all the cultures above, making number seven. The composite beast is formed mainly from all the above empire, but especially from characteristics of Babylon and Rome. Since the man, beast, of Polyon comes from end time Babylon and his false prophet from Rome. These two together form that Revelation 17 called the eighth beast, referred to my article study Nebuchadnezzar. Something called a beast refers to what devours, destroys, ruins, and spoils. These are the characteristics of all these great empires. Satan used these portals to teach mankind his mind, and to bring in religion that would suit his purposes. I have written extensively with much documentation on the mind programming of the American people, but I've noticed the same mind programming across board and Western culture as a whole, referred to mind programming, hidden manipulation, and the world brain and quiet wars and silent weapons. How this mind programming parallels those who are strung out on drugs or alcohol is amazing. Today, from babyhood and toddler age to death, most Americans are in a process of being drugged so that their minds stay at the age that the drugging begins, about age three to four, i.e. as in the natural, so in the spiritual. The ability of the intellect continues to gain knowledge, but one's ability to make wise choices and relate to others is frozen, i.e., the ability to relate to truth and embrace it, the ability to change, the ability to face life and mature, the ability to handle negative emotions and discipline oneself to overcome them, personal responsibility to the master creator, the ability to think beyond one's personal flesh needs, agendas, and ambitions, the ability to mature and take charge over one's thoughts and reactions, the incredible self-centeredness and irresponsible nature that rules a child's mind continues and grows stronger. A child thinks the world revolves around him and others are simply there to serve him. Teens or adults locked into that state of immaturity are vulnerable to the mind programming by those that use self-centeredness to get people to make choices that will end in their destruction. The chronic appeal to the flesh from all corners of our culture has caused the immature to run after what they can get to saturate their desires. Therefore, people are in serious debt into sexual perversions gluttony, time-wasting entertainment, and have little to no time for any reality that would grow them up. That is a running from any responsibility to a real Elohim. Most intellectually enjoy learning about God, but to know Him personally takes time and effort. And the drugging effect of the culture that begins with babies has left most people totally without desire to know him. Personal relationship gets in the way of their doing, thinking, saying whatever they want to do, think or say. Note this. It is a psychological fact 
that whatever age a person begins seriously taking drugs is the age they freeze at. They stop their ability to relate to normal life outside their drug culture and so continue to think like a drug addict, totally self-centered and irresponsible, even into old age. It is also true of those who split into multiple personalities at a young age due to extreme trauma, rape, other types of perverted abuse, seeing things seeing that their minds can't accept. Traumatized children are prone as they get older to try to shut out the hurt, the emotional pain, the disappointments by taking drugs, staying drunk or acting out in violence and retaliation toward others. This is how the Jezebel spirit is spawned also. Jealousy and competition drive a person to take control of others. The manipulation, witchcraft takes many forms. The mind programming of the American people into fantasy, illusion and deception, blinding them and deafening them from reality has been a good hiding place for the cruel experiments the Illuminati mind programmers have done on the psyche of the people. People fear losing their security blankets, their zones of protection they have created. It is more than fear. It is often extremely traumatic. The programming of the American people into fear has been methodical and cruel. The constant bombardment of advertisements to get people on untested prescription drugs and dependent on doctors has made a, us a nation of guinea pigs. By creating sicknesses and even DNA changes through addictive to food, to water, contamination of the air, putting destructive chemicals in clothes, in cookware, poisons in vaccines, etc. The American people are the sickest and most dependent people on legal drugs in the world. I've had people in Europe comment on it with sad faces. Field programming begins with cartoons, children's books, movies, or toys, oftentimes even in homes of normal parents who are not cruel or abusive. But evil is masked, and few see it for what it is. The messengers of Satan are bombarding our children and grandchildren, all masked by cute fantasy and fun. Wild pa wise parents. Wise parents protect their children by shutting off the satanic mind, programming devices coming into their homes and teach their children the love of Yahuwah and Yahushua and the beautiful boundaries of Torah. I have written two articles on how good parents sacrifice their children to Satan daily without knowing it. Gentle sacrifice and cartoon. You can find almost all articles on laydownlife.net and the most important concentrated ones on comeintertheMikvah.com. Little ones are so often exposed to pornography early in life. The shock of Pornography on the naturally modest, naive, innocent mind of a child or young teen is the same as with rape, a violation of their modesty. Sometimes their minds even slip into other personalities, into a fantasy mindset to escape what they cannot live with. Tragically, this goes with them into their adult life. So are living in hallucinations without hallucinogenic drugs. Only by the true new birth, the scripture new birth, and the infilling of the spirit of Yahuwah, the infusion of the word daily and dwelling in his presence, can the spirit begin to work to cleanse the mind of the person so that 
they have a chance of being free, referred to the true new birth, but it has been said that pornography is six to eight times more addictive than cocaine. I believe that. Demonic spirits enter a person through mind-altering drugs, through pornography, which often accompanies the taking of drugs from sexual abuse and other traumatizing things that free the mind relationship to the outside world. These abuses open portals to the entrance of demons. Unless the spirit of Yahuwah sets them free, they are bound in a box of their own mental and emotional pain all their lives. I live with such a one. I have compassion, yet great understanding. So many are afraid of losing their witchcraft powers they have from the dark kingdom. Many are so fearful because their identity will be lost if they lose their powers. I've counseled several like this. Typically, tragically, tragically, they hide in Christianity or the Messianic movement. The ability to love others is taken away with drug addiction, anger, bitterness, hate, and revenge. Jealousy and competition often take the place of learning to love and reach out to others. These negative emotions are very, very deep, especially if they are taken in when a person is very young. Demonic spirits ride on negative emotions and rejecting the freedom of the nature of Yahuwah. Yahuwah cannot help these people, for he is light. Some of the characteristics of one who has frozen in their maturity by taking addictive drugs is his responsibility, running from responsibility, laziness, lethargy, no motivation to improve one's condition, apathy, a free will and attitude, undisciplined, a flying the seat of one's pants, attitude, no sense of time keeping all of other people's needs to keep time totally self-centered so that they manipulate and use others to do for them without care about anyone else. The ability to love is not there, not real love, to lay down one's life for a family or others who are suffering. They usually have a hard time keeping a job, if they even get a job. They love to sleep until late in the day and stay up all night. They talk about themselves profusely. They think like a teenager, as in, it's all about me. They don't think about others because all they think about is themselves. If they relax, they often lapse into talking in a low-life street type of verbiage because this is the way they view life. They gravitate to the negative and often fake emotions to get self-pity. Men have hair trigger tempers, but they have very deep anger, hate, and bitterness. There is no little to no understanding of or relating to people who work for a living, provide for a family, take vacations, love, laugh, and enjoy the simple beauty of a normal human life, let alone people who minister to others with pure minds and unhidden motives. If they are older, they often view people of their own age group as silly because in their mind, they are still a teenager or a kid in their 20s. They view the normalcy of precious love as something to loathe and mock. They see only the down and dirty, and in their bitterness, they despise what is precious to others. Therefore, to lie, steal, even kill is of little importance. As long as their needs are met, they cannot communicate with those who are pure of heart, for they only know how to relate to those like themselves. They are frozen in place in a mentality that has them totally under the control of the evil one. So many end up on the streets or in poor conditions. What is so blatant is that so-called believers can sit, laugh, at sin on TV. The shows... The show America's Favorite Home Videos often shows people and animals who are obviously hurt and everyone laughs. 
Only one strung out on drugs would laugh at someone being hurt. The drug effect bypasses compassion, tenderness, kindness, gentleness, meekness, and true caring love. These characteristics of Yahuwah and Yahushua are almost totally gone from planet Earth. So the killing of children, the murder of people in general, that is seen on TV from morning to night does not phase those who are so hardened and cold. So, most act just like a hardcore drug addict without any caring for anyone else, even mocking those who are tributes of the Creator. If a person does not have the nature of Messiah, i.e. Galatians 5 verses 22 through 24, for example, ready to lay down their lives for others in need, then they are not Yahuwah's children. By their fruit, you will know them. I have seen very few so-called believers, no matter how well they perform outwardly, who have the nature of the God they say they believe in. Their nature is more like the God of this world, King of darkness. Therefore, in the days to come, the few of Matthew 7, verse 13 through 14 will be very evident. There is a spiritual blindness that has blanketed Western nations that has spread throughout the world. Most people act normal. The men go to work on time. They provide for their families. They enjoy their children, etc. Yet they are blinded to the evil around them. And so on the inside, they are quickly dying from being disconnected from the life that is only found in the presence of the real Elohim of Abraham, Yeshak, and Yaakov. Hurt as a child so often results in a deep cavern being carved in a person that they fill with bitterness, hate, anger, and a desire to get back at in some way for being hurt. They may try to suppress their hidden anger and bit of venom, but it comes out if they feel pressure or pressed to think or do anything they don't want to do. Refer to 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 through 15. Abba once spoke to me, Christianity is the mask of Satan, for its tolerance of evil and its rejection of Yahuwah's Torah has caused it to be a perfect mask for one who hides. But the light will expose the darkness. Because of the tremendous gap in communication between the world of the drug addict and those of normal society, the one who throws in maturity is often shown, for there is no understanding between those who have been on addictive drugs and those who have not. These who have been on drugs so often view people as usable. Few men on drugs have respect for women, for example. They are something to use and throw away. They talk about body parts rather than seeing the person as a real human. It takes the power of the spirit of Yahuwah to deliver one and transform them into the nature of Elohim. And I've seen him do it to hardcore drug addicts. I know that Jackie Pullinger in Hong Kong, saw many desperate cases totally set free by the power of the Spirit. There has to be deliverance by Yahuwah's power from the demonic spirits that accompany drug addiction or alcohol abuse, or those who have been addicted to pornography, to violent music, violent movies, and abuse of others. It is not just a matter of getting saved and going to church or trying to be good. I worked for years in the area of deliverance of people from demonic, demon, demonic powers. I understand that it is a process. Unless a person wants to be free, and remarkably few do, there can be no deliverance. We are in a time when the foolish virgins are realizing the master is coming, so they are off trying to buy oil. The thing is, 
because they do not respect timing and prepare their return only to find out they have been shut out of the wedding feast and therefore also the kingdom. It is amazing that multi millions of so called believers are in that category. They have wasted their lives with one foot in the world and one foot in the church world and not prepared for knowing the master. So, they have missed the time of preparation and it is almost too late to catch up to the wise virgins. Perhaps it is too late. But I don't discourage anyone from trying to build a relationship with him by seeking him with all their heart. Yahuwah does not wave a magic wand over a person and take them from being totally self-centered to being a radiant, blameless person, walking in the nature of the Creator. It takes daily obedience to the Word, discipline, using the will to seek Him in His presence, to study His Word taught by Him, and to learn to fear Him, know Him, know His nature, ways and thinking. To walk as a bond slave, a, a disciple, a follower of the Lamb is not some quick fix. People in Western society want a quick fix, want a quick meal, want a quick solution to problems, want quick money, etc., etc. It comes from a drug mentality of wanting a fix, a high, an escape. Beware, there is a too late, a cutoff point. In the story of the ten virgins, fire were prepared and fire were lazy fools. And when Messiah came to call the guests to the wedding feast, he said to the lazy ones, Truly I do not know you. Does he know you intimately in relationship? Someone on crack cocaine or LSD, capital LSD, or other such mind-altering drugs can lose their humanity. New drugs are being introduced all the time with more and more horrible side effects. These can lead one to cannibalism and to do horrible things that the natural mind cannot think of because in that drug state, Satan possesses them. The National Guard has been trained for an outbreak of cannibalism in America. Demon possession is on the increase. We are also being invaded by hybrids, transhumans, Nephilim, reincarnated, all in preparation for the coming of the son of destruction, son of Lucifer, Apollyon, Osiris, Nimrod. Messiah said that in our day, because of lawlessness, Torahlessness, the love of many will grow cold. Because the world has rejected Yahuwah and his Torah, his boundaries for life in his kingdom, including Christians. Few care about anybody else but themselves and what comprises their own little world. Tragically, most Torah guarders are the same. They are so proud of their intellectual knowledge that they won't even share the good news of salvation with others. They have rejected the mandates of Messiah for their rabbis' opinions. Many have forsaken the beautiful instructions of the New Testament where Torah becomes a living reality in the spirit. I have written these stark realities to show you some of the effects of the mind programming done to you, which is similar to the effects on those taking mind-altering drugs. Our whole culture is stripping off its facade to reveal the ugliness of its nakedness. But few even care as long as no one disturbs their plans for their dinner, their shopping spree, or their vacation. The heart, the capital H, capital A, capital A, capital R, capital P, pulse waves. The other E, I, L or ELF, waves hitting the earth, extra low frequency, ELF, from outer atmosphere sources. The poisons in our food, water, and air, and even clothing now are all geared to your destruction. You are the guinea pig for all types of experimental substances and technology. So much destruction is bombarding us daily, affecting body, mind, and emotion, and few even care anymore. Most of you know that the Greek word for drugs is pharmakia. 
from which we get pharmacy, the Greek word means sorcery, witchcraft. In Abba's kingdom, the solution is spiritual warfare, bringing deliverance and daily coming into his presence with thanksgiving, praise and worship. I am standing in worship now more than ever. It is the most powerful spiritual warfare of all. The condition is fast coming, Revelation 9, verses 20 through 21. And the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands. That They should not worship the demons and the idols. And they did not repent of their murders, nor of their drug sorceries, nor of their whoring, nor of their thefts. America is the leader worldwide of the growing and selling addictive mind-altering drugs. The leader of the violent music and violent movie industry, the pornography industry, the sex slave market, child pornography, and the use of children and adults to work in fields and factories in third world nations for as little as 30 cents a day for 12 hours labor. Truly, as Revelation 18, verses 11 through 13 tells us, this end time Babylon trades in the bodies and the souls of men. Therefore, we are will receive the backlash of judgment from a righteous Elohim. The nation is now surrounded by Russian, Chinese, and North Korean military. Within are 30 to 100,000 Russian troops who are training for our takeover, along with the Chinese, the Iranian, and Iraqis, Muslims of all types, along with the heartless mercenaries and hardened criminals, chipped soldiers and violent gangs, all ready to destroy the American people. Executive orders have been signed so that your property, as well as your children, can be taken from you at will. Abba is allowing the use of the harp, capital H, capital A, capital A, capital R, capital P technology that has created the fires, the storms, the hurricanes, and tornadoes, the freezing and the extreme heat, the destruction of the food crops as our punishment. All the while, the people are being drugged into a state of non-reality, into apathy and lethargy, going to work like mindless slaves to pay bills. They're run up because the programs have told them what to buy to be happy. Hallucinogenic drugs cause a distortion of reality so that people see things that are not there or see things that are there but invisible to the natural eye. Because drugs put one into a dimension that is controlled by Satan, Lucifer, and his fallen ones. They actually go into an altered consciousness and see demons. They are either scared out of their wits or think they are nice, like seeing capital E, capital T, E, T, and thinking he's cute. The mind programming we've been subjected to puts us into a similar state of non-reality, and we see demonic activity, but so often think nothing of it. Do you notice that the dress of most Westerners is becoming more and more undressed? More and more skin is showing in public. It is far worse in the UK, capital U, capital K, and Europe, than even the US, capital U, capital S, but the US is getting there. I found out lately that even so-called believers rebel against modesty, men too. This is a drug-related mentality. Getting naked while taking drugs or being drunk is part of their brand of normal. Therefore, the emphasis that has overtaken our society aimed at having a sexy appearance. People are being degraded to no more than whores, animals, people without a spirit. Men are getting more and more feminine and women more and more masculine. Sexual perversion abounds. Crazy hairdos and dives. The tattooing of the body which is forbidden by Torah. Body piercing, fighting, filthy thinking. All are more than just flesh. They are satanic. Men are investigating, contacting, contacting the supernatural world through things like Ouija board, Eastern mysticism, Practices, horror, movies, violent music, sexual perversion, practicing out-of-body experiences, and contacting spirit guides. When I say many, I include the Christian world. 
these things open portals to the demonic world. Yes, yoga, karate, and acupuncture included. It is a fact that Satanism in the United States military has grown to an enormous level. Did you know that? That hints at how secure we really are. He commands that we be set apart as he is set apart, but to do so requires discipline of the mind and the body. Few are even strong enough to rally their will and even desire to be disciplined. Most are so overcome by the crushing of the python spirit in America. They are just surviving. Sin separates one from Yahuwah. Most have never connected with him in reality. So we are in the time of the raging insanity spoken of in 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 through 7 and Romans 1 verses 20 through 32. I have seen this to be a growing nightmare in churches and messianic congregations where people mask their rebellion under fake spirituality and correct rhetoric. But if cross their vengeance is cruel, with no conviction of wrong, no, I'm sorry, just halted pride that reflects the nature of their true father, Satan. The Jezebel spirit has risen to enormous proportions, and that spirit in both women and men is being tolerated. Just as Yahushua warned the assembly of Thyatira, Revelation 2, verses 18 through 29, to practice sin willfully carries heavy penalty. We come against the judges of the universe, Yahuwah and his word, and Yahushua and his salvation. In the Tanakh, willful sin is punished by death. After Messiah, willful sin is punished by loss of eternal salvation. Read 1 John 3. It is very plain, Messiah said to the woman caught in adultery, Go and sin no more. There is no salvation without first repentance. Repentance is a gift. It opens the portal of his being able to forgive. But continuing to sin brings judgment. In a drug state, sin is blurred, treated as a mistake of fooling around, but justified in some way. Drug, addic drug addicts have no consciousness of sin. Sin is part of their lifestyle, using people to saturate their lust. But in churches now, sin is a dirty word that runs off seekers. It is more... It is more blasphemy in the face of Yahuwah. 2 Peter 2, verses 18 through 22. For speaking arrogant nonsense, they entice through the lust of the flesh, through indecencies. The one who have indeed escaped from those living in delusion, promising them freedom, though they themselves are slaves of corruption. For one is a slave to whatever overcomes him. For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of the Master and Savior, Yahushua Messiah, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end of them is worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the set-apart command delivered to them. For the prior verb has proved true. A dog has returned to his own vomit. Hebrews 6 verses 4 through 6 is very plain. Also Romans 1 verses 28 through 32. Romans 8 verses 6 through 8 verses 13 through 14. Galatians 5 verses 19 through 20. Ephesians 5 verses 3 through 7. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 8 through 11, and so many passages tell us that we can lose our salvation if we do not maintain the new life that he has given us. He sent 10 of the tribes of Yaakov into captivity for two, 730 years because of sin. 
He kept the whole generation that came out of Egypt from entering the promised land because of their rebellion, sin, except for Joshua and Caleb. He is light. Light cannot tolerate darkness in his presence. How close can darkness get to a light bulb? Yet people expect the consuming fire to tolerate their sin. Insanity. Salvation is by faith allowing repentance of sin. But the walk of faith mandates obedience to Yahuwah's word. We are born again into his service as bond servants of a master in training for reigning. At the new birth, we embrace discipleship, following the teacher, the spirit of Yahuwah. You are not your own. You are bought with a price. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20, 1 Corinthians 7 verse 23. The price was the blood of the spotless lamb of Elohim. We are mandated to be set apart from the world and its fleshly enticements unto Yahuwah Elohim. Or else he cannot be our Elohim. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 14 through 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1. We can only dwell with the humble and contrite. He won't allow the pride and the rebellious in his presence. Western religion has made many loopholes so its members don't have to obey Yahuwah or Messiah either. This free will in Christianity of the Greco Roman culture is an, any, is an anything goes fun game with no personal responsibility to a covenant, leaving everyone's beliefs and actions up to them. It produces a drugged state of being, it produces an illusionary belief. Therefore, many think they are going to heaven, but they are not. He does not know them. The cheap gospel is an easy belief system that gives people assurance of getting out of hell while requiring no obedience to their Savior, giving an illusionary image of the God of the Bible. People think they can sin while God pats on the head and smiles. There are no boundaries. Like the world, the church has thrown off the bands of the Creator, Psalm 2. There are over 5,000 denominations and organizations and over 350 translations of the Bible into English. And anytime someone doesn't like what the church teaches, they can go to another one or start their own. It is a religion for drugged people with a false security. Religion produces a drug-induced state of hallucination that rivals drug addiction. Truth demands change. Truth demands a clear mind and pure heart. At the true new birth, one becomes totally a totally new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. All things. Capital A-L-L. Capital T-H-I-N-G-S. All things become new. Thus, the truly born again have the nature of Messiah and are diligent to grow up to be like him in all ways. Those who do not know him are more and more manifesting the nature of their father, Satan. Jeremiah 3 verse 3, John 8 verse 44. I read an article recently entitled Evil, Crossing the Threshold. But I have written more about the takeover of evil since the unleashing of it that happened between July 27th and August 12th. I have had a lifetime of education on seeing evil and understanding it, how it works, and what it is doing right under everyone's nose. But few see it. It is very clear to me and to those who have been in the dark kingdom. But to the drugged ones, evil is becoming easy to accept. The drugging effect has made people run from truth into their fantasy, non-reality. Excuses are made for evil. Anyone speaking truthfully and plainly are usually called judgmental, critical, or unloving. Tolerance of evil is reigning, and most of Yahuwah's people are going along with the tolerating of it. This herd my mentality will lead people to take the mark of the beast without caring. There is, capitalized, no fear of Yahuwah, but soon the world will fear him. Capital N-O, capital F-E-A-R, 
Capital O L, Capital Y A H U W E H, Capital B U T, Capital S O O N, Capital T H E, Capital W, Capital O, Capital R, Capital L, Capital D, Capital L, Capital W, Capital W, Capital I, Capital L L, Will, Capital F, Capital E A R, Fear. Capital H, capital I am him. No fear of Yahuwah, but soon the world will fear him. Woe to those that call evil good and good evil. Isaiah 5, verse 20. We have been raised on cute little characters since the late 40s. The practicing wicked witch, Walt Disney, has programmed almost all of us into a fairy godmother thinking. In the world of hallucinogenic drugs, a person taking them can be what they want to be and believe what they want to believe. All boundaries are removed. The boundaries of Yahuwah for our good are thrown away. At the Olympics, the call for freedom took on a new meaning. Psalm 2 gives that meaning. In the world of those taking mind-altering drugs, there is no morality, no code of ethics. If they want to run around naked, participate in orgies, kill someone, rape, steal, vandalize, destroy, it is okay. Okay is capitalized, capital O, capital K. They are free. This is the freedom that Satan offers, and tragically, even those in Yahuwah's family are falling for this type of freedom, the drug being rebellion. Because reality is coming so fast and furious, most adults are running like scared ostriches and sticking their heads in the sand to protect their imaginary security. They are making their philosophical, theological God say what they want him to say, often taking one scripture verse out of context to back their personal thinking. Like Adam and Eve, most blame their sin, their apathy, and their disobedience on someone else a spouse, their parents, a bringing, a friend, etc. The taking of personal responsibility is foreign to those on drugs and to those drugs spiritually. More and more people are being reduced to zombie state. If you are wasting your time watching the major mind programmer, the TV, you will get what you deserve. For out of it is coming sound of silence, waves that can blind, deafen, scramble your mind and bring you to a state of total shutdown where your will has take, been taken over. Refer to digital TV, beware. All the time you have been opening your mind to Satan's mind programming, you could have been in the presence of the creator of the universe. What a nonsensical stu- substitution. The Olympics was all about the substituting of Zeus and Apollo for Yahuwah and Yahushua. But so-called believers do the same thing every day. Substitute his word for the words of man, the entertainment of man, the advice of man, etc. Yet they are slaves of their lust. They do not know him. Whom to know is life eternal. They make themselves gods in their own minds, trying to control their lives and live and, and the lives of others. That's part of the Jezebel spirit. Yet they live in fear of losing control. I have reported firsthand on what the sound of silent waves did to Saddam Hussein's finest soldiers. I was in Jordan in 2003 when America went into Iraq with that technology. The whole of the fighters of Iraq were taken over in seconds as the sound of silence was used, reducing the army to a bunch of emotional babies who put their heads on the shoulders of the American soldiers and cried. When a major crisis happens, of course, everyone in the world who has a TV will be watching it. At some point, the sound of silence rays will be used, but Right now, they are slowly being used at a low frequency. I have dedicated my life to trying to help people get out of this drugged state, but few and fewer have given the will to free themselves. Statistically, it is a fact that 95% of people refuse to change, 
most like themselves the way they are. I wrote in a recent article, What is Satan After?, about the power of the will. But now, even people's will is being taken from them slowly but surely. Only those who have taken the time to be steeped in his word, taught and capped by him. T, capital A, capital U, capital G, capital H, capital T, capital B, capital Y, capital H, capital I, capital M, taught by him, and stayed in worship in his presence, have clear minds. But they have avoided the mind programming devices and obeyed the master and are on the move, serving him, following the land wherever he goes. Revelation 14. Chapter Revelation 14, beginning at verse 10. It takes a strong will to fight against the drug state. Unless a person is demon possessed mm. or dead, they still have their will. But the mind programming takeover technology being used now has the power to shut down the will. While you have your will left, will you fight against your being taken over by the drug and actions of the enemy? Will you take the time to know Elohim of Abraham, Ishak, and Yaakov as he is, and side with him, worshiping him, seeking him with all your heart, obeying him without any balking or excuse? Will you give yourself to him to help you out of your drug Drug state into an alertness and clarity of mind that comes from the study of the whole word with him to teach you. Abba gave me this word a few years back while I was in Jordan. Tell my people that praying the sinner's prayer does not ensure their salvation. They are dependent on this prayer to save them. Only their absolute adherence to me and obedience to my word will save them in these days to come. My wrath is blazing hot against the lukewarm. Take sides, take sides, I say. For I would rather you be a total heathen, totally cold toward me, or a flame of fire for me, than to be lukewarm. Yes, take sides. Since I returned from my declaration assignment to Rome and Greece in early August, I have felt a strong sense of having sided a tangible sense. The plumb line has been dropped in the spirit of Elilah, Eliyahu Elijah has gone forth with a repeat 2 Kings 18, the contest on Mount Carmel. Do you see how much effort those Baal had to put forth to call for Baal to send fire from heaven? They worked themselves into a frenzy, and still Baal did, not, did nothing. Eliyahu mocked them. His prayer was very short and to the point. But when he finished, who has sent the fire? Today the world is rallying multi millions, even billions by TV, as during July 27th and August 12th at the Olympics, to call for the coming of Lucifer and his son, Apollyon, and the fallen angels, the gods of the ancient world, the Nephilim. During this time, world over the ancient indigenous people, the Druids, the New Age movement, the hierarchy leaders of the Illuminati, Vatican, Masons, and Black Rod of Europe, the Moravian bloodline, the Satanists and worshippers of Lucifer, all joined in the rejection of Yahuwah and his son and his Torah in public display, in symbols and in direct speech to the dulled ears of the billions. Yahuwah heard, and now his reaction is also unleashed. Yet he caused his tiny little remnant of set-apart ones to call out, Come, Yahushua, come, to invite him to return to take over this earth. All he needs is a few. At the Democratic Convention, a major American Muslim group associated with the Muslim Brotherhood has been invited to have a program in which over 20,000 were join in prayer in Charlotte, North Carolina, and other events. Why would such a thing be allowed? It is totally Jew-hating and Christian-hating and openly touting takeover of America. Have you been reading my articles? Read Launching the Chaos 2011 for starters. The person who wants to be re-elected 
are directly associated with the Muslim Brotherhood and is dedicated to creating the chaos that is needed to bring in the war against Israel. World chaos and the new world order out of that chaos. That whole theme was a big part of the closing ceremony of the London Olympic. Go back and read the four articles I wrote during that time. Pray much for his understanding of all that you see and hear. And a tiny but powerful handful of of Yahuwah's people are lifting their voices to call out his praises and calling for his son to come, but he only needs the few. I plead with you, please plead with others to wake them up. Romans 13 verse 11, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, but now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Put on the mask of Yahushua Messiah and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Shalom in his love, Yedidah.